Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today, we're going to be looking at a free painting application called Lightbrush that was uh, somewhat recently uh, recommended for me to cover on the channel, and I thought, hey, why not? This one is uh, a pretty cool application. You can run this just about anywhere you want. So if you're running uh, Mac, Windows, Linux, uh, BOS, uh, Amiga, you name it, you can probably run it because, yeah, you guessed it. This is a web-based application. Now, I actually oversold that a bit. You need to have a modern browser and preferably a Chromium-based browser, and I got to admit, that's that's true because this thing runs like crap on Safari. I just kind of found that in general the the, uh, the brushes lag and so on. But let's get back to this nice drawing that I was in the process of making. This is a Gundam, well, technically a goof. Uh, but let me just go back to my little stroke work here. Let me just draw this shape in. Who am I kidding? I didn't draw this. This is not my work. I'll go to accreditation in a little bit, but you can see this is exactly the kind of stuff you can do with this. You've got a decent stroke level. You've got support for styluses with pressure sensitivity if sketching is your thing. It is a stripped down subset of what you would expect to find in a typical painting or drawing application. So you've got a number of different brushes. You can switch between these uh, predefined brushes right here by using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight keys. Uh, you've got quick controls over things right here. At the same time, you can also hold down the Q key and it'll bring up a quick menu. So if you want to change the size on the fly, uh, you can do so. In terms of coming up with the menu options that are available, just head on over to help and you go here, you've got the manual. This will break down the various different tools that are available. You can drill into any one of these particular things. Another th concept that they're working with here is the spree. Uh, it allows you to retouch laid colors and more toggle by pressing X on the keyboard. Instead of drawing, it will be erasing recently laid color or undoing the eraser. It's sort of like a work in progress layer. Uh, on top of that, on the topic of layers, you have full layer support off the hop. It automatically creates uh, the main layer, a foreground layer, and a background layer. So for example, here we've got the background selected. I'll hide the, the middle ground here. Let's go ahead and make it, uh, let's not go black. And we have got pal palette tools, by the way, as well. So there we go. So, all right, apply and then paste. So you've got the the fill there and then we'll bring this guy back forward it's like obviously well that didn't work because this is an entirely opaque layer so we've got the erase we can start erasing parts here there we go start erasing parts of the foreground and then you see our background starts to bleed through at the same time you also have your traditional layer function so for example here if we want to change this layer to be soft light layer it's getting more of the background coming through hard light and so on. So you can see here, you can do quick layered effects. So if you wanted to change your pencil or inking work to make it look like it was more of a blue tinge, uh, you could do so. We come over here again and we can switch that out for, uh, let's say red. No, actually, that's not red, that's more hot pink. There you go. And you're gonna see immediately the effect of what you're working on. So now that we've got this nice bright red selection, I'm gonna show you one of the other options we got available, which is filter. So you can do um, desaturation and so on. You can invert the colors like so, or what we can do is go to a full black and white. There's not a ton of filters there, but you see you've got options in place. On top of these eight brushes that are defined, you've also got the brush palette, which has a number of different brushes uh, set up for you. So for example, if I wanted to paint some leaves in the scene, I could select the leaf brush. You got a number of different options here. You can upload your own tip. It is all pressure sensitive, so you can tell it to that this brush is pressure sensitive or not. Uh, a number of different options available for controlling the brush. And then now that we've got that defined, let's make that a little bit bigger. Let's change that to greenish. All right. Oh, I'm still in my background. Oh, I'm still, in, why am I still on fill? Darn it. All right, that's not what I meant to do. All right, so let's go back to our brush. We will select it. There we go. Close. Okay, that is not painting how I expect. Maybe it's just way too big. Hmm. Not sure what I'm doing wrong on that particular brush, but as you can see here, you can get different results from different brushes. Pretty simple. You've got your palette controls over here. Let's go over to a brownish color. So there you see painting into your layers and so on. On top of that, you do have traditional selection tools. Here's your magic wand type selection. I find it's a little bit overzealous in what it selects. And I also find, to be honest, the fact that there are no fine tuning controls really limits the functionality on that select tool. Uh, at the same time, you do have hotkey support. So if I do control D, it deselects things. Uh, right click does like a, a an in-world select or a lasso select like so. I do wish to see, again, when you select this, you can select the tolerances or whatever to control how well it'll work. Because as it stands, I find it a little bit useless as it is right now. You also have the ability to uh, select a space like so. And then we've got uh, movement abilities like that in the foreground here. You also have a lasso style selection. So if you want to do more of a freehand selection, uh, you can do so like that. Um, you have, again, your drawing, your various different selection tools. Uh, you've got tools here for uh, controlling your zoom levels. You can fit it to your screen. Another nice thing, especially if you're coming at this from the world of game development, if you're doing pixel art, oops, 
uh, hold down control and zoom wheel and you'll find you've got the ability to zoom in to pretty much fat pixel level. So if you want, we could come in here, select a brush, give it a size of literally one and we could paint one pixel at a time uh, with this brush in theory. Oh, I think I have something selected. So let's unselect and then paint. All right, why are you not painting? Oh, I've got it in a weird mode. Okay, let's go to the foreground and do it. So you see here, there's your paint, and you can draw it at an individual single pixel level. So if you, you want to work on pixel levels, you can do so, uh, which is kind of a nice thing. And again, you've got the tools here to do fit, one-to-one, -one, uh, and so on. So uh, that is, in essence, what Lightbrush is all about. Now, why would you use a tool like this and not just say, uh, Photoshop, Paint.net, uh, Affinity Photo, GIMP, or whatever, Inkscape, you name it. Well, all of those require installs. So I can think that's probably the biggest use case for something like Lightbrush. You're on the go, you need to edit an image. Lightbrush, just open up a browser, and boom, you're good to go. Uh, if you are uh, in an environment such as a public library or a school where you can't install software, or increasingly, if you're in a school setting, you may be forced to be using a Chromebook, in which case you've got this is a good solution. It's kind of a bit simpler than something like Photopea, which is kind of a, an, an entirely Photoshop clone that runs in the browser. I covered it on the channel in the past. I think those are the primary use cases. I'd be interested to see where this ultimately develops. It's a one-man task, and I think he's done a pretty solid job on it. It's an interesting-looking project. Again, come on in here if you want to check it out. It's available in the browser at light-brush.art forward slash paint. And then come on in here. You can check it out, learn about the hotkeys in the hotkey menu or the manual in the manual menu. And yeah, there you're good to go. So you see you got pretty much uh, a number of hotkeys to quicken the workload that you're working with. And I find as I learn it a little bit better, it does work a little bit better for me. So I, yeah, I'm impressed by it for the most part. And then when you're done, you can come in here and just uh, save as, you can save as ping, JPEG, uh, or you can save it as a project file that you can upload back later on uh, using open uh, and bring it back in if you so wish to do so. So you can, um, you know, come back and change your works later on. Also, if you select new, uh, you've got a lot of predefined things like A4 size paper, legal, photo, so on, or 4K, full HDP, old fashioned VGA, etc. cetera. Uh, so you got a number of presets available here and yeah, that's it. So that is Lightbrush in terms of the image, not mine. Again, uh, this was a CC BY uh, image I pulled off of Flickr. I haven't seen Flickr in ages, by the way, uh, but it's actually the work by uh, him, MA1216. Although if you look in the URL, his name is Super Serial, which is much better. Uh, so it, not my work. I figured I would credit it to the person involved. So if you're interested, uh, that's whose line work I worked with here. It just made for a much better thumbnail than anything I could have possibly drawn. Uh, and yeah, so if you want to check out Lightbrush, light-brush.art. Uh, and then just come in here and click the paint button or go to lightbrush.art forward slash paint. And you are good to go. Now, one last thing to point out here is this part right here. So it is Chromium based browsers. Ideally, that means Chrome Edge Opera. Basically means everybody not named um, Firefox or Safari at this point in time. And I will admit on Mac OS, at least Safari ran really crap, but at the same time, um, it should work on any desktop and most tablets with keyboards. I should imagine it works on any any tablet, regardless to keyboard. There's no specifically keyboard requirements that I ran into, although those keyboard hotkeys should be supported if you choose to go that route. So that's it, Lightbrush. Uh, again, another browser-based tool, quick and simple kind of drawing type environment. Let me know what you think of it and would you ever find something like this useful or do you have your painting application of choice and you never find yourself using something like Chromium or out in public where you could quick use like kind of a painting application. Again, I do like the idea of never having to install anything. So that's definitely appealing. So let me know what you think of this tool and tools like this in general. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.